Hello, my name is Doug Reinemann, and I'm Professor of Biological Systems Engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where I direct the University of Wisconsin Working Research and Instruction Laboratory. Today we'll continue our series on evaluating milking performance with the specific topic of evaluating teat end health. Teat end health is of course important because the teat end and more specifically the teat canal is the barrier between bacteria in the environment and the inside of the teat and the udder. So maintaining good teat end health is important in reducing mastitis risk. Today we'll be discussing three different aspects of teat end condition. The first is hyperkeratosis. Hyperkeratosis is a thickening or roughening of the skin on the exterior of the teeth surrounding the teeth canal. The second condition we'll be discussing is teeth end congestion. Teeth end congestion is the accumulation of fluids in the teeth tissues surrounding the teeth canal. The third condition we'll be discussing is teeth canal keratin dynamics. And this is the balance of the keratin production and keratin removal interior to the teat canal. Hyperkeratosis is a response of the teat skin to the collapse of the liner. The liner collapses around the teat end during the dephase of pulsation. This Liner compression causes the skin at the end of the teeth to be stretched and compressed. The skin responds by thickening itself to protect itself against these stresses. In the cases of mild hyperkeratosis, a raised ring will appear around the end of the teeth canal. As this ring becomes more thickened, it may dry and crack and cause a roughened teeth. Hyperkeratosis develops over a time period of from days to weeks. It is a response of the skin to the stresses imposed on the skin, and this takes some time for the skin to react and develop a stable condition. So typically, uh, hyperkeratosis will, will take about two to three weeks to develop, and likewise, if you remove the cause of hyperkeratosis, it will take about two or three weeks to resolve a hyperkeratosis issue. The level of hyperkeratosis can be evaluated in a herd by scoring TDNs. There are four categories of TDN hyperkeratosis. The first being no ring, in which there is no visible evidence of hyperkeratosis or no ring observable around the end of the teat. The next category is a smooth ring in which a ring is clearly visible around the end of the teat canal, but the surface of the skin on that ring is still smooth. The next category is a roughened ring in which the ring surrounding the teat canal has started to crack and shows some signs of roughness. And the final category is a very rough ring in which the cracks and protrusions of the teat end ring are pronounced. So again, four categories, no ring, smooth ring, rough ring, or very rough ring. <music> When assessing the level of hyperkeratosis in the herd, you should score at least 100 cows or 10% of the herd. When scoring teats in the parlor, have some sort of suitable scoring device, such as this teat condition scoring sheet. Mount it on a clipboard so that it's easy to use. If, however, in the parlor, a scoring sheet is not suitable, you can use an alternative device, such as this digital voice recorder. 
Regardless of what type of system you are using, always record the ID of the cow. And as you are doing the scoring of the teats, try and do it in a methodical manner so you're always doing teats in the same order. It is also important when scoring teats that you try and assess them as soon as the teat cups are removed. Here, because of light conditions in the parlour, we are using an external light source, such as a flashlight, but head-mounted flashlights are also quite suitable for this task. As you score the teats, try and always record your observations as you go at the end of each cow. Remembering what you are seeing across more than one cow is quite difficult. So record as you go and don't move on to the next cow until you have finished making your observations. <music>Remember that the main cause of hyperkeratosis is the compression of the teat end by the liner. So, if you want to reduce the level of hyperkeratosis in a herd, the best solution is to find a liner that applies less compression to the teat end or a low compression liner. The amount of time that the liner is on the teat has also some influence on hyperkeratosis but not nearly to the extent of liner compression. So things like early unit removal or better prep procedures can have a minor effect on improving hyperkeratosis. Teat end congestion is accumulation of fluids in the tissues surrounding the teat canal at the end of the teat. Fluids are drawn to the teat end by the forces of vacuum applied during milking. These fluids are removed by liner compression. So one of the causes of teat end congestion is inadequate liner compression. This is usually caused because of a problem with liner fit. Teats that are very short cannot penetrate deeply enough into the liner to receive adequate compression in the liner barrel. To assess the level of teat end congestion, there are two indicators that can be used. First of all, look at the color of the skin at the end of the teat. If the teat end has a bluish appearance, it is an indication that the tissues at the teat end have become congested. The other way to test for teat, uh, teat end congestion is to palpate the end of the teat and feel for firm or hardened teat end tissues. As in a previous segment, here we are approaching the cow to make the teat assessment virtually straight after the cups are removed. Here I'm using my left hand to palpate the teat and teat ends, checking for signs of firmness. With practice, this becomes quite straightforward. In addition to this, we are also using an external light source, in this case a flashlight, to help check for the presence of blue teat discoloration, particularly around the teat end. Again, make the recording of what you are seeing as you go. It is very difficult to recall what you are seeing in more than one cow. so. Write it down before you move on to the next cow. If you see a blue teat end, sometimes it's useful to write it down as a B. One of the other things that you might be able to do is to use another type of recording device such as a digital camera. This will help you to take images which can be used for further analysis and in any reporting that you have to do. Excessive teat end congestion can compromise the ability of the canal to have complete closure between milkings. Excessive teat end congestion can also be a comfort issue for cows during milking. The keratin dynamics in the interior of the teat canal are an extremely important aspect of mastitis risk. 
Keratin production in the canal is stimulated by liner compression. So as we compress the liner around the teeth, the canal responds by producing more keratin. A thin layer of this keratin is also removed during each milking. So the final keratin dynamic of the teeth canal depends on the level of keratin production as well as on the level of keratin removal during each milking. It is very difficult to assess the keratin dynamics of the teeth canal because there are no outward visual indicators of either keratin production in the canal or keratin re removal in the canal. Maintaining good teeth end condition is an important aspect of reducing mastitis risk and increasing cow comfort in any dairy herd. Today you should have learned how to identify hyperkeratosis and teat end congestion. You should understand what their primary causes are and how to assess them in a dairy herd. Mm -hmm.